Hopefully I've got battery enough to do this little short video. It's Saturday, May the 11th, and I just want to show you the grapevines and what's happening, and then just a quick little look around at uh, some of the planting that I did recently in the hoopos here. Um, I don't know, I guess I have everything that I want planted in here, basically. I'm going to give you a look around. I keep uh, using the camera, and I keep forgetting to charge the batteries. So this is probably going to die on me any second. But what I want to show you is... I don't know quite what you call them other than blossom buds, I guess, on my grapevine here. This is Beta, the uh, hardier of the two grapevines. The other one has now got some leaves. I may actually show you a leaf on it just to prove that they are there. I don't yet see the blossom buds on the Somerset vine, but the Beta grapevine is loaded with these. So I hope I have... I have hopes, anyway, I guess, of, of uh, grapes later on in the season. I did a little bit of research online for both varieties, the Beta and the Somerset, and they are both supposed to be self-pollinating. So hopefully that means I don't need insects in here. I don't know. When they blossom out, I'll sort of swish them around a bit, and hopefully that will get them pollinated. And I also noticed, I've been telling you all along that Somerset is a green dessert or table grape. Well, <laughs> went and looked at photographs and it's not. It's uh, those reddish brown ones, but it still says that it is seedless. So that's the thing that I'm looking for. If it makes large clusters of grapes for me sometime, I would like to uh, um, make raisins out of them with my dehydrator, seedless raisins. Anyway, there is a nice look at what's happening with the well, that's a couple vine. of the leaf clusters on, on the Somerset vine. I guess if I zoom back, there's probably three in that area. Yeah. Um, I suspect if this vine wasn't in the hoopos, it probably wouldn't survive winter here. It's very slow, leaving out anyway in the spring. And as I said, I don't see any evidence yet that uh, it's going to have blossom buds, but it may do that yet later on. Just to look at some of the things over on the bench, um, you can make out the numbers there. I'll, I'll, once again, I'll put the plant list down below. I think this particular edition of the plant list will have everything on it. Uh, some things I still haven't planted outside, beans and uh, turnips, rutabagas, if you want to call them, but there isn't much advantage to planting them until it really warms up. But the calendula on the right there, if you can see little green bits, they're coming up. And in the background there, the two varieties of squash, the winter squash and the summer squash. So far, I do see some of the zucchini summer squash are, are coming up, and I uh, haven't seen any of the winter squash break ground yet. And that is my uh, geraniums for outside. And next to that is a flat of um, Swiss chard that I just planted yesterday, so nothing there yet. And down below here, I can get in on it. There we are. Those are two uh, cucumbers that I'm going to grow in the hoopos here. Uh, 25 and 28 if you want to refer to the list down below. 25 is that little 4 to 5 inch cucumber that you see in the cellophane wrapped packs and costs half a fortune in the store. So hopefully I'll have some of those a bit later on. And 28 is a white variety uh, from Ray, Pat Praxis. Um, his free seed giveaway. Never grown a white cucumber, so I thought I would try one of those in here. I grow all my cucumbers, I guess, in here for that matter. I'll be planting my pickling cucumbers in here when I take the peas out. The onions are starting to size up a little bit. I don't mean below ground, but the onion tops were little wispy things when they were planted in here well, maybe three weeks ago, I guess, and they've they started to get a little larger. Now there's a shot of the daikon, the two rows on the right, and then on the left of the bed closest to the camera here are the uh, leeks that I transplanted from all over. And so far, David, from Work With Nature, your suggestion is is, is proving out. I'm keeping them well moist and uh, no sign of any blossom buds coming up yet, so I may actually get a leak out of this. And beyond that are the peas, which are really starting to fill in. Uh, no blossoms yet, but they're dwarf variety, so I would expect to see blossoms almost any time now. The artichoke hasn't started to send up any blossom spikes or chokes, whatever you want to call them yet, but uh, 
I would not be surprised if that were to happen fairly quickly. That's the strongest and healthiest it's ever looked. And I think when it was that size last year, it probably was August before it got to be that size grown from seed, but that was when it started to send up artichokes. And in Italy, artichoke season starts about this time of year in southern Italy and moves its way up north, which is where these things originate. So hopes for artichokes. This is the bed that had all the weeds in it. And I showed you the before and after look in my last video. I've now got everything transplanted in there that I plan to put in there. I may sneak an herb or two in later on, but to just give you a little pan up thing here. Hard to see, but right there that is red uh, oak leaf lettuce. They sort of blend in with the soil. Off to the left here, these are three different varieties of mustard greens. And off to the right, the little green thingies are different kinds of brassicas. Uh, that's a really experiment in here. I haven't given them too much space because I'm wondering if it's too hot in here to grow brassicas, but I would like to try to get away from the miserable cabbage moth. So we'll see what happens there. As we move down, there are the three or four different varieties of peppers. And at the very end down there are my tomato plants, uh, three varieties of tomatoes, two that are determinate and one that's indeterminate, and the one okra is down there. You can't really pick it out, but it's on the left. I won't bother taking you from plant to plant at this particular time. I'll wait until they get a little bit more established and start to bloom and whatever, and then we will uh, have a closer look at each variety. Well, that's it for this little update. Thank you very much for watching.